You can use our time, a period of introspection to steady energy. So the kind of basic constituent of our experience is energetic. It's mental energy, thoughts, running, jumping, skipping, whatever they're saying or emotions surging, welling up, or dragging down whatever mood they're in, bouncing or flat. Bodily energy, whether you feel brisk and lively or feel tired. So then energy is a basic ingredient of experience, which other mental states and feelings rest upon. <coughs> and it's also very helpful way for handling the difficulties and uh, joys that come in introspection in meditation. Mm -hmm. So for example, if the mind is running very fast, whatever it's running with, then you can, of course, you can get interested in what your mind is thinking about or you can find fault with it or you can basically just calm it which doesn't really deal with the topic at all, it just deals with the energy. You know, you calm it. When it calms and steadies, then you'll find that a lot of the discursive topics just melt away. They're only kept there because the mind is running. As it runs, it gets it keeps imagining something it's got to run to, something it's got to be busy with, something it's running away from. When it calms down a bit, becomes steadier, then those objects, those impressions, those aims or concerns, sort of, oh, what was that? What was all that about? This is a basic principle of samatha. It clears. Yeah. And uh, because we're so often uh, really interested, attracted and with the topics of our thoughts, our emotions, seem to be myself that we don't necessarily really deal very directly with the energy it gets complicated the more you think about it the more complicated it gets so just dealing very directly with the energy of the body and the mind body, thought and heart <clears throat> Very simply speaking, you have uh, uh, sometimes a threefold process. Ground, great grounded. Mm. Get clear, clarity. Uh, grounding is in, to do with steadying your energy and getting it. Uh, so that you can be clear about. Clarity is also that which summarizes it's an energy of discernment, wisdom. What's necessary, what's helpful. And friendliness or empathy which is not finding fault with but generating a particular quality of acceptance and uh, quiet sympathy mm. a groundedness so what is it that gives us groundedness we might very well just feel the feeling in the body and bring your attention to the simple experience the structural experience of the body the frame of the body the back the bones the sense of the weight the pressure of the body resting into the ground a very obvious way of touching ground <clears throat> and all you want to do with that is you don't go into details just go to the whole impression of body how you know you have a body and uh, keep pressing the mind's awareness into that into the, the spinal column is very useful 
base of the spine, the pressure of the body sitting on the ground, on the seat, on the chair. That's a given, really. And then drawing your attention up the trunk of the body without losing the sense of the ground, mm. the firmness of the upright form. Why we use a sitting meditation. Of course, you can do standing or walking, but sitting is really good for this uh, simple, grounded sense. The mind will tend to want to fly off into details or topics and just keep coming back to the very simple sense body. Now you can also use a thought such as right here. You know, every any thought that gives you that sense of the simple presence. You know, his mind is thinking about this and that and the other, but here. Where are we here? Yes, but it's here. You know, what you should do, no, but you're here. So you just kind of use a thought. Cause you can have that same grounded structure. Present moment. So with the uh, inclined, the thought is something that you can immediately steer. You can pick up a thought and use a simple thought like that. Almost like using a mantra. And the uh, feeling of the pressure of the body. Perhaps you might also use an out breath. And, you know, naturally you can focus on sensations, but even more than important than sensations is just getting yourself to come back to one point, a simple obvious point, time and time again with full awareness, just like you're deliberately placing your body onto a surface. Some, you know, your mind skids off and you place it again with a contact impression such as the entire body that you can feel quite easily. It creates a, a, a mooring post. The tides of the mind sweep over it. If you don't follow them, they will tend to abate.
pick up something simple like that and then you start to measure or assess what's happening in your body <coughs> uh, anything that you don't need to have active to withdraw energy from it in your face your eyes your throat your chest your arms fingers as if you're letting everything drain down to the ground it's something then that uh, there's a kind of careful engagement with to body what things tend to get busy and speed up and they also tend to contract body tends to tighten up pull across the chest or close in the throat or or in your cheeks or around your mouth so you keep being aware of that and uh, wait a minute don't need to be doing that if you feel dull or sleepy you do it with your eyes open <clears throat> or half open looking at the floor because you're not your energy is not something that's just refined and in, internal it's something that's very obvious So what grounding will do is, is give clarity, give rise to clarity, because it uh, helps to consolidate the energy. So instead of it sort of diffusing into all kinds of dreams and ifs and ands and spaciness, it consolidates here, therefore things become simpler and you get some clarity. The clarity is... Uh, the sense of spaciousness and ability to pick out details. They stand out, things stand out. If that's not happening, you need more groundedness means. Whatever, you know, reciting a mantra, counting the breath, 
but using it in a steadying, earthing way. Mm -hmm. Where is that? So you can spend quite a while just cultivating that because the primary <coughs> confusion of the mind blurs everything into multiplicity, future, past, self, other, should, ought, remembering, always splitting up into bits and pieces, whirling around and the mind gets fuzzy and caught in moods and emotions. It favours them. You have to train it. And this, using the body is a very good way to cultivate clarity because you can focus in on particular areas of sensation <coughs> and do it repeatedly so that the clarity is going on with the same intent of grounding by the process of repeatedly going back to it again and again. So we might say just simply noticing, you know, Okay, let's just focusing on your one knee, the sensations in one knee, and then the sensations in the other knee. And if you just do it for one second or two seconds, you notice they are different. You know. Something obvious, but getting clear distinctiveness, so it's not just the sort of blur. Mm. Hands, notice the warmth, the textures of the hands, and the left hand, the right hand, mm. tops of the shoulders, the left shoulder, the right shoulder. You work through those six points. Left knee, right knee, left hand, right hand, left shoulder, right shoulder, just sharpening, touching, lingering, then move on. The next point, clarity helps. It's helped by a certain briskness of energy. Sharpening. Don't drift. If you get the, the sense of that, then you can refine it down to fingers. There's a lot of sensation in fingers left forefinger, middle finger, ring finger, small finger, thumb. Touching, 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 touching. So if your mind is blurring, then you pick up discrete areas of sensation as if you're touching them with your mind, flashing onto those then perhaps returning to the whole body, impression of the body, and then touching those one, two, three, four, five, six, just a couple of seconds at a time. And that briskness of energy also helps to dispel the dullness, the sleepiness, that uh, driftingness, which seems pretty common in most meditation scenes somebody's always you know 
zoning out, drifting off, not even really knowing it. cultivate these two is very powerful uh, and efficacious tool mind becomes uh, uh, unified and clear and you start to notice uh, and fill in your experience so instead of these patches you know, contemplating your body where does it feel uh, Vigorous, where does it feel tight or stretched? 
tense? Where does it feel loose? Where do you don't where you don't feel it at all? Bits that you're missing out on. Mm. Mm. So often the lower back disappears as a, something you experience, and you find yourself caving in. You know, you've got no no energy there. Mm. So you notice the bits you don't notice. And try to bring your attention to that. Or you've got a lot of sensation happening in your neck and shoulders, quite common stress areas. Mm. Notice is it stronger in the left or the right? See if it's strong in the right, give your attention to the left. Strong in the left, give your attention to the right. Because your, your attention, when it has clarity and strength, your attention gives energy to any particular place that you focus it on. So if you focus it on an area that doesn't seem to have much energy, it will start to pick up. Places that are tense or stressed have too much in them, and you want to withdraw your attention from that, spread it over to the opposite side of the body, move it around. Tension is frozen energy. So you got difficult your left shoulder. You notice that. You draw your attention from your left shoulder right across to your right shoulder. It's you get it to sweep down your body. And that will help the uh, tension to abate. Something begins to release. <coughs> Notice what you're not noticing. Back, particularly lower back, area between the shoulder blades. Mm, this is where we lose that because our, all our sense organs are on the front, so you don't notice your back. And that what causes us to lose this basic strength because uh, you know, you're always leaning into the world rather than standing apart from it. And sweep down your back. Feel how your shoulders sit in your back. Bring energy into your lower lumbar region. Pull it in, draw it up. Mm. So using the time skillfully. And, uh, you know, mm. the rhythm of that, how. You know, we're moving through this rather fast, but you can just stay with one of these points for the entire period, you know, whatever's necessary. You know, just cover a lot of stuff and choose what seems relevant to you at this time and bring your energy into it. And don't concern yourself with what your thoughts are doing. That comes much later.
and basic goodwill or basic sympathy. Really, it, the whole process of this is is conducted in that theme. It's uh, what's for your welfare, mm-hmm. that, that attitude. It's that which makes our quality of patience and repetition something that's no longer frustrated or trying to make it work but just the constant caring Uh, just come back to this ground yourself lift up in this come back again it's uh you know uh, it's a quality of applied goodwill to the purpose of clarifying and strengthening the mind Mm. you can emphasize it uh, as if you're bathing the body putting the body in something warm or clean or bright Mm. encouraging the mind This is this in this way we establish a foundation for meditation and for recognizing what is unskillful. It takes us away from any of these bases groundedness, clarity, sympathy. Anything that takes us away from that is unskillful not supportive anything that takes us back to that is going to be for our welfare and we just keep checking every attitude against that those measurements
you establish that those bases, then contemplate what happens, what's important. Let's let your attention go to your mental content or the dominant feature of it feels anxious or happy, busy or whatever. Just uh, see if you can investigate that. So just conclude with the chant on the Buddha's words on kindness. Seated, contented, and easily satisfied, unburdened with duties and frugal in their ways, peaceful and calm and wise and skillful, not proud and demanding in nature. Let them not do the slightest thing that the wise would later reprove, wishing in gladness and in safety, may all beings be at ease. Whatever living beings there may be, whether they are weak or strong, omitting none, the great or the mighty, medium, short or small, the seen and the unseen, those living near and far away, those born and to be born, 
May all beings be at ease. Let none deceive another or despise any being in any state. Let none through anger or ill will wish harm upon another, even as a mother protects with her life her child, her only child, so with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings radiating kindness over the entire world spreading upwards to the skies and downwards to the depths, outwards and unbounded, free from hatred and ill will, whether standing or walking, seated or lying down, free from drowsiness, one should sustain this recollection this is said to be the sublime abiding, by not holding to false views, the pure-hearted one having clarity of vision, being freed from all sense desires, is not born again into this world. 